So one of the comments on 30 Hits of Acid, I don't remember where exactly. I think there's like 60,000 comments now. But one of them I, I caught. I try to go back and read them, but, uh, you know, can't read them all. But I do catch some of them. And one guy said, uh, asked me, he goes, um, have you ever uh, been to drug rehab? Which I thought was kind of funny. Uh, but, but as a matter of fact, yes, I have been to drug rehab. I've been to AA and NA and UA and, you know, who gives a fuck A. But uh, drug rehab, like a real drug rehab, not like an AA class or, you know, an outpatient program. Drug rehab, like the Betty Ford Clinic <laughs> type drug rehab. Um, I, ironically, um, I was only 13. Okay, and how, how you might wonder, like, damn, you started young. You must have been slamming heroin at 13. No, no, no. Actually, I, I was just starting to experiment with drugs. But it coincided with the time that I ran away from home when I was 13. And I was gone for a long time. I was gone for, like, six months, eight months, something like that. Which is quite a long time for being 13, right? Um, slept outside, slept at friends' houses, built a fucking fort in the middle of a field, you know? With, and took a hole and put some center blocks all around it. We had a good time. But, you know, it wasn't always good. But it, it was fun. It was an interesting experience. A um, <clears throat> little too young to make it on my own at 13. But I fucking sure tried. Um, anyway. Yeah, so, like, I guess one of the parents who would occasionally let me stay at their place um, uh, with the kid that they went to school with uh, sold my mom, like, like, that I, like, she caught us doing, like, drinking cough medicine. That was like when we discovered the robotustin, right? The robo shuffle, um, is what we called it. Um, robo trip, or whatever. It, uh, that's what we called it. But anyway, yeah. So yeah, I mean that. I guess I guess you know, parents could be a little concerned if their thirteen year olds like slamming cough medicine. But it wasn't like. Don't get me wrong. That, that's kind of you know, that's definitely a drug. But it was just it wasn't. It was because we couldn't get beer. Like, you know, when you're 13, it's kind of hard to, like, get weed. or Weed is about the only thing we could get. So if you want to get a little harder than weed, you know, that was about all you really had. You know, occasionally somebody would steal some booze from somebody's parents. But, you know, anyway. So when I got tired and eventually had to go home, one of the conditions of my return uh, was that I um, get that I not do drugs and that I get involved in some sort of drug, like, class, like, like AA type shit, right, for teens. Al-Anon or whatever it was. Anyway, so I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever, right? So I started doing these, like, like you know, AA type meetings for teens, right? And uh, <clears throat> the counselor suggested to my mom, like, you know, you know, we really think that he'd benefit from this great program, live-in program for a month out in the middle of fucking Texas. Uh, at some of them in Phoenix, Arizona, right? But no, it was like the middle of fucking Texas, like Wiley, Texas is what it was called. You know, whoever the fuck that is, right? <clears throat> and he's like, we think we'd benefit and you better catch him now because his these habits could be lifelong, you know, and he may be dead by the time he's 18. You know, so they scared my mom and blew a bunch of smoke out of their upper ass, which, you know, I mean, there were some legitimate concerns there, but a lot of it, it's a referral business, right? The, these, these drug rehab cost $30,000, right? The insurance picked up most of that, right, for my mom. So I think my mom still had to pay like four or 5000 out of pocket. But, you know, hey, if a drug counselor tells you, hey, your 13-year-old kid's going to be a heroin addict and be dead by the time he's 18 if you don't put him through this 30-day rehab that's godly expensive for some reason, it's $1,000 a day, you know. Um, so, you know, they, they've convinced my mom. My mom did it. Um, I didn't have much of a choice. So, pff, off I went. And, uh, wow, what an experience. This drug rehab was a living thing. It was at a hospital. Uh, we did get to go out. You know, we had like a group counseling every day. We had like, you know, one-on-one um, -on -one counseling, psychiatrist, you know, drug education classes. We got to go out like every night to like an AA meeting type thing. Um, occasionally, you know, we had like a rec room. We played foosball and shit like that. It was, I mean, it, was, it wasn't terrible. I mean, um, you know, I had a roommate, had a couple of roommates. The weird thing was though about the drug rehab was... Um, I was so young. I was 13. And it was kind of kind of backfired in their sense because like at the time, like I said, I, I smoked weed, I drank a little bit, but you know, I, okay, I, I did some cough medicine, I drank some Robitussin occasionally. It wasn't like I was sitting under a bridge drinking it, you know, chugging it. You know, I mean you drink one, you're like good for like a week. You're probably not gonna do it again for a while. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, Dramamine pills was another thing we used to do. Motion sickness pills, you take like ten of those and you'll fucking 
trip balls. But not, I mean, in a bad way and in a good way. Like, you'll hallucinate, like, really hardcore, like, heavy shit. Like, shit that's not there, cool shit. But it'll make you feel like somebody just shot you up with a fucking dirt syringe or something. It's kind of gross. But, um, <clears throat> I don't really recommend it unless you're really desperate. But, yeah. Um, but it backfired because I was so young. Where now I'm getting stuck with these people that are, like, they're still teens. 16, 17, 18, all right? It was, like, the majority of them were, like, 16, 17, 18. And I'm 13. So these guys have years of experience on me, right? These guys are talking about doing acid, which I'm just like, what? Like the stories they would say, I was just like, wow. I, I couldn't wait to get out and try it, right? You know, um, some guy actually smuggled some in, right? But I, I, I was too afraid to try it because I was so young and I didn't know what to expect, right? At a hospital? No, I didn't want to try that shit. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't. But um, yeah, I mean, these guys are like doing acid. But the other guys in there like, you know, doing speed. Back then it wasn't called meth, it was called crank. It's like high grade meth, like whatever. It's like meth times five. But anyway, it was like, like this, they're doing speed, heroin, you know. So there's like hardcore drug addicts in there. Like, not just hardcore drug addicts, but who abuse hardcore drugs that I never even fucking heard of. I was hearing war stories and, you know, trip reports of shit that like, I was, that I had never heard of before because all my friends were my age, right? We didn't know, right? So now I'm surrounded by a bunch of like, it's like having like fucking 20 older brothers that are all drug addicts, you know? And you're stuck with them for 30 days. The stories that you hear were fucking great. And uh, they stuck me with this one guy. He was an old, he's not old, he was older. He was like 17, 18. Punk rock guy, real tall. And I don't know why, his name is Brent. He used to, he used to like, he, not really, he didn't hurt me, but he kind of pick on me a little bit, right? I guess he kind of had to, right? Because I was so young. So uh, I was kind of a little t intimidated by him. But uh, one day he was like, he said, we had to share a room, right? He's um. He's like doing something like with his crotch, right? He's kind of like, I thought he was like taking a piss in like the corner of like the room. Cause that's kind of what he looked like, right? I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And he turns around and there's like this shelf. And he like puts his like dick back in his pants. And he's like, come here. And I kind of looked over there. I was like, I don't know. And anyway, there's like these pencils. Like he put like these pencils and like a little obstacle, like a little square, like a cage, right? Up on the little ledge. I'm like, what, what? And he goes, look. And I looked really close, and I'm like, what is that? And they're, they're fucking pubic crabs, right? Or lice or something that he picked off and he put them in there. It's like, it's a crab circus. And I just thought that was the funniest shit. I'm just like, what the fuck, man? But anyway, um, uh, some great stories. But yeah, I mean, it's like, I went in there not doing a lot of drugs, just kind of experimenting. But it backfired because I went out on a mission to fucking do these drugs, right? I had to try acid. Had to try mushrooms. You know, I had to try basically everything that I heard of the stories. And I did within the next couple of years, you know. Um, I, I think when I got out, I was sober for like two weeks. You know, just long enough that my parents like kind of backed up, backed off my ass a little bit. But then I was like, whoa, you know. And um, that's when I started doing a lot of acid because I was like on a mission to find acid. And I did. And uh, yeah, and then I did a lot of acid for a couple of years. When I, from like the time I was like 14 to 15, 16, those three years right there, mainly 15 and 16, but yeah, the time I was 15 and 16, I was doing, I was doing acid several times a week, if you can believe that shit, um, at least two to three times a week, yep, for about a year or two, <laughs> um, and I don't have those, what do they call those, HPPD or whatever that is, I don't think I have that, I don't really... If I do, I'm like so used to it that I don't fucking you know, <laughs> don't even know anymore. But uh, yeah, that's my drug rehabilitation story. I, I I struggled like after that, you know, with trying to stay sober, like just beat myself up, you know, I'd go on these like mainly when I was really young, like in my early twenties and shit, you know, oh I can't drink or I can't smoke weed. I just you know, and it just eventually I kind of figured out my balance. It took me a long time. It took me about, well over a decade, but um, you know. The drug rehabs work for some people if they need it, you know, good for them. If um, some place, place, some people don't, you know, it, it's a different environment and it's one that takes a little bit of, what do you call it, um, they got to suspend disbelief a little bit. You know, you got to kind of put up with some shit. You got to kind of swallow some, some theories and some facts and some, you know, higher power bullshit. But you know what? It worked great for my younger brother, you know. He got sober and he turned his life around. He's got a great life. He's got a wife and kid and, you know, boat and all that shit. Whatever. Good job, you know. And he was just a fucking fuck up, you know, up until up until he got sober. But it worked for him, the AA, the 12 steps, you know. So, um, you know, 
know, it's just more power to you. I think life's too short to, you know, beat myself up over, you know, occasionally doing recreational drugs. But I do see the uh, benefits of not doing them, for sure. But that's my drug rehab story. Um, I have some more, but it's a 10-minute video, so I'm just going to show it.